Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Hopefully you can hear me okay. This is a slightly weird setup for me. Uh, we're trying a new area in the house and hopefully it all works okay. I'm also trying a slightly different setup on the camera, so hopefully this is nice and crisp for you guys. I will be doing the video in more sections than usual, so you may see some little jump scenes. That's because I wanted to go with some 4K quality. That will get rendered down when I do the render, but uh, hopefully it looks nice and crisp. In any case, thank you very much for coming along. If this is your first time on the channel, you should most definitely hit subscribe. If it's not the first time on the channel, well, then you're fucking weird and you definitely should know better than to come back to this absolute trash. Let me also just start by apologizing in advance in case there's any kind of weird grunting noises. I have a pet pug. And for those of you who are familiar with the channel already will know this. He likes to uh, sit there and make loads of noises while I'm recording. So unsurprisingly, you may catch some of those in the background too. Either way, we're going to stop waffling, we're going to get stuck right into the video. So today I am bringing you my Salaman Great List. Of course, we're not playing at Locals or anything at the moment because things are still off. So uh, the, the list is kind of up in the air. I'm making a few changes as and when I go along. And that's kind of what I wanted to do here was if anyone plays the deck out there, feel free to give me your feedback and let me know what you think I could change. There is no side deck for this very reason as well. But there was just a few bits I wanted to try out. I changed in some ratios and uh, it seems to be working quite well in online testing so far. So we're going to start off with the actual Salaman Great part of the engine. Uh, it goes without saying, of course, that we're playing a one copy of Gazelle, limited to one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> speaks for itself. You, you want to see this as much as possible. Uh, awesome card, absolutely insane. Next, we're playing a single copy of Falco. Now, I had considered the possibility of playing a copy of Foul. I'm not playing it in this build. It was one that I kind of wanted to find space for, but really couldn't. Um, sometimes I feel like it's great and other times I feel like it's just really pointless. Um, I'm not playing it at the moment. It may creep back in depending. Uh, again, a lot of this is just based on what I'm playing online. So it's kind of hard to tell really with the current format. Uh, once things resume in a physical sense though, of course, we'll get a better idea of that. We then move on to our two ofs for the Salaman Greats. So I've got two copies of Spinny. Uh, I think two copies of Spinny is absolutely fine. Uh, it works okay as is. I don't think a third is necessarily needed. I don't think it's as important as it was before. I think when you're playing uh, Gazelle and going into... Um What's the word? Mirage Stallion. That's the one. I've forgotten, I've got, forgotten what it's even called now. It's been that long. Uh, I think that this was much more important then. Uh, not quite as necessary now, but it, it works quite nicely as an extender. It's another name to get on board, that kind of thing. We have two copies of Foxy. I think two is absolutely fine. We're almost never using its effect on summon unless we don't really have anything else that we can go for. Uh, most of the time, you're getting it on the field, linking it off, and then bringing it back for free, essentially just as a free extender. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty nice. There's a, there's a lot of cards that I'm finding that come up against that are face up and staying on the field, which means it does have that double up of you can pop cards on the field as well. And then we round off our actual Salaman Greats with two copies of Jack Jaguar. This one I always find myself coming back to. Of course, it's a level four, so there is some additional synergy there, which we'll get into. Um, and also the fact that if one gets hit out of the grave by like a DD Crow or caught by the grave or something like that, you've got another way to continue playing. This is really, really important, especially for your combos now. Uh, wait, well, just as important as it ever was, really. And I think having access to the second copy is really, really nice. Next up, we're looking at some of our non Salaman Great cards in the deck. Uh, I've got a section for hand traps, which is coming up later on. Uh, some of them are debatable whether you call them hand traps or not, but they're in here nonetheless. Uh, but we are going to start off with the kind of standard extenders and starter cards that you kind of need in the deck. Uh, so we've got three copies of Parallel Exceed. I think that this is pretty self-explanatory for anyone who hasn't played the deck recently. This is absolutely insane. And honestly, I think it could go in so many more decks than we're seeing it in right now. Uh, it's a free rank four, essentially, if you make a link summon. Uh, um, it comes up every single game that you see in your hand. It really, really boosts your starting off plays. I think it's incredibly important in this deck. And of course, if you do end up with extra copies in your hand, you can just get rid of them quite easily. Now, this is an area that's up for some debate, and uh, I'm sure some people will scold me for this, and others may uh, think differently. I've got two copies of Lady Debug, and I'll go ahead and do this now. I've got three copies 
of Flame Buffalo. For the longest time, I felt like Triple Lady, Lady Debug was correct on Flame Buffalo was correct at maybe one or two, maybe even none, depending on how you wanted to go about with the build. I did, however, find that I wanted to get into my hand traps much, much quicker to be able to retaliate during my opponent's turn. You're starting boards with this on as strong as they were before. They are still pretty good and still pretty consistent, but you need more ways to be able to interact with the opponent in the current format. Otherwise, you just straight lose. And uh, I feel that Flame Buffalo just helps you dig that a little bit more. Lady Debug, sure, it lets you see Gazelle straight away or whatever else you need. But Flame Buffalo just drawing two could be two hand traps or anything else that you possibly need. And of course, it also gets your starting plays going by drawing two cards. There's so many other ways to get to Gazelle and any important starters in the deck. that I think the Flame Buffalo just drawing two is slightly better at the moment than Lady Debug's specific search. And to round off our monsters, I'm going through the hand traps. I will go ahead and say ahead of time, I don't have any copies of Infinite Permanence at the moment, so unfortunately that isn't in the deck. However, it would be, and I'll, I'll explain what I'm using instead in a moment. Uh, so we're playing three copies of Nibiru. I think this is pretty much mandatory at the moment. Whether you're going first or second, you need this card. Uh, if your opponent combos off and you have no way to interrupt them or just like end their turn, then you, you just lose. You straight lose, and Nibiru just helps that to sort of stop from happening. I think it's incredibly important at the moment. I've got three copies of Effect Veiler, even more important, lacking Infinite Impermanence. Of course, Infinite Impermanence is just, you know, infinitely better, but we won't even get into that. Uh, Effect Veiler, just really, really strong in this at the moment. Uh, it, it's crazy. You just need so many hand traps. And uh, fortunately, this deck can play a small enough engine for its main goods that it, it can fit so many in. And I think Effect Veiler is just really important. We're playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, the most diverse of the hand traps, maybe apart from Impermanence. It hits basically every deck that there is out there. It also happens to be Fire, which of course just has even more benefits, being able to add it back to your hand, allowing it to go into kind of other plays and things like that. Just, just crazy important. And we round off with three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Now, for a while, I would have thought maybe to consider cutting this. But, of course, Halka Fibrax is in full swing. Everybody is going into a turn one. And this will just help you dig even deeper into getting into your hand traps, which will allow you to continue to play the game. If you do not stop the Halka Fibrax combo, you will just lose. And this is a card that allows you to have some level of playability during the opponent's turn. Now, I would cut, cut this for infinite impermanence if I had them because I feel like this and infinite impermanence just clog too much uh, from my experience at least maybe other people will disagree um, but also it does fix your hands a little bit so if you do find yourself in a position where you don't open a way to go into your combos then this can help you get there and of course if you don't open any other hand traps this gives you a second wind almost at being able to continue to play the game. Next up, we're going to take a look at the spell lineup. Uh, it's pretty standard. I don't think there's anything too spicy in here. Uh, I think most of it's sort of pretty self-explanatory too. Uh, we start off with three copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, you can do the math. You can sit there and argue all you want about it. Uh, you can talk about that one odd time you banish a gazelle. I mean, usually you're shotgunning this afterwards anyway. And if you're in a position where you need to activate this immediately in your turn one, you're probably in a position where you're likely to lose the game anyway. Amongst other things, of course, it does just give you two extra options that you shouldn't have had in your hand. Um, but we can go on and on about this card. Anyone that knows, anybody that knows this shit about this game, knows the Pot of Desires is absolutely incredible, and it's even more fantastic in this deck. It works so, so well. I really don't think there's a good replacement for it. Of course, Pot of Greed would be nice, but uh, that's not happening. So Pot of Desires is the best we have available to us. We also have triple copies of Signet Mining. This is pretty standard. Uh, I don't think I really need to explain this. Dumping resources into Grave that can be reused and being able to fetch whatever you need into your hand. Just straight fantastic. You, you need to play it at three. There's no question of that. And then we move on to our one-offs for the deck. So I've got a single copy of Sanctuary and a single copy of circle um again sanctuary just needs to be at one you've got ways to recycle it easy ways to cheer it out in the deck you really don't want to see it in your opening hand it is such a brick it's so dead ass like playing multiple copies there's no point everyone knows this by now and a single copy of salaman great circle because it's at one of course if it was at more we would play more and then our last two one ofs uh, we've got one copy of Monster Reborn, just a great starter card, a great extender, whatever you need. And a single copy of Upstart Goblin, because playing 40 cards 
at 39 is better than playing it at 40. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. And of course, we've got plenty of other draw and search spells. This just digs you deeper again, going back to that, you need a way to see your combos. And by having a blank card in the deck, you get that little bit closer in your opening hands if you see this from the get-go. And then we're rounding off the main deck with our traps. So there's just two, and I'm sure you can guess what these are. We've got a single copy of Raw and a single copy of Rage. Whenever I play this deck, I do feel like I like more copies of these available to me. Um, but one of each is just about enough. And I think that the main deck is too tight, especially with having to play so many hand traps at the moment ways to interact in your opponent's turn but also if you have too many of these and you find yourself going second of course they're not as good um ideally we want to win the dice roll so that's not really a problem but it is what it is i think this is absolutely fine as it is one of each like i say would potentially like to play more but don't really feel like i've got the space to do so and that of course rounds off our main deck a dead 39 cards uh because of Upstar Goblin, so what's not to like? Um, I think that it's really, really nice. There's not too much I change. Like I say, I feel like Foul could potentially go in, but I'm not sold on it at the moment. I have tried a few builds with and a few builds without, I'm sure. And also not 100% sold on my Debug and Flame Buffalo ratios, but I think that I've got the, the mentality right in my approach to that. And of course, we would have Infinite Impermanence in there if I had access to them, which I don't at the moment, and frankly don't really want to pay out for them until tournaments resume again. But we're going to go on to the extra deck. Like I say, no side today, so we are going to go straight into this one. Uh, so we've got triple copies of Baylinx. I think that this is pretty self-explanatory. Again, you just recycle through these just so often. Um, you want to get one into the grave straight away. A lot of the time I like to get rid of if I've got a spare monster. I'll put one of these underneath the Sunlight Wolf just so my traps and stuff are still alive. Um, it just gives you another way to play because a lot of the time you find yourself in weird positions like... I remember having like flashbacks of the last time I played this where people would just kaiju my Sunlight Wolf and my traps would be switched off uh, and I wouldn't be able to basically retaliate during my opponent's turn. And it just keeps you being able to do that. It helps you keep resources on board. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it does everything. It does everything you need it to do. We've got triple copies of Sunlight Wolf. This is mandatory. You already know this card does everything. Without this, this deck is dead. It is completely unplayable without this. Straight up. Uh, if this goes at any point, nobody will play this deck at all. I promise you. Uh, insane saying card. If you haven't read it, you really should spend some time reading it. I don't know if you can see it on screen clear enough. If not, go out and check what this card does. We are also getting a nice reprint of this, I believe, in uh, Battles of Legend, which was announced today. This is Friday, so I'm recording this a little bit ahead of time. Friday the 10th. Uh, Battles of Legend announced, it looks like it was an ultra rare, but we can't see for sure. Uh, would be really nice, of course, if it's in secret as well. We have two copies of Heat Leo. I think two is absolutely fine. Um, I don't really feel the need for more than that. The third one rarely ever comes up and you can recycle them. And normally when I'm playing this, it's when I'm pushing for game or I'm clearing off my opponent's board to try and like put myself in a really advantageous position. And two of them is absolutely fine to get you through it. Uh, it's very rare that you'd ever be able to go into the third like in one turn normally. And that's kind of the line of play you want to go for. It makes sense in my head. Hopefully I've articulated that well enough that you understand where I'm going with this. But yeah, two copies seems absolutely fine. We've got one copy of Heater, the Fire Charmer Ablaze. Uh, again, it's just one of those cards. It's such a free extender, uh, being able to nick your opponent's Ash Blossoms. And that kind of thing is really, really nice. Of course, in the off chance you end up in mirror matches, it's good for that as well. It's just an all-round good card. We already know how good this is in this deck. And we have two Link Monsters left. So we start off with Borolo Dragon. Uh, we've cut Boral Sword completely. Um, it's just not needed anymore. We have a better option, which we'll get to in a moment. I'm pretty sure you know what it is before we get there, but let's just say that now. Um, yeah, Borrow Load seems absolutely fine. It, it's a really, really good way to out parts of boards that you wouldn't be able to destroy by battle or by card effect. And this just helps you plow through a different kind of board that normally you'd struggle with in this. You've got so many other means of removal in this deck that this just gives you a different option to be able to play through your opponent's board. And our final Link Monster to touch on, Access Code Talker. Absolutely bonkers. Even more insane in this deck. <laughs> it's just, it, it's absolutely wild. Um, the amount of times you just go in for game with this, it, it's effectively Power Crab Boral Sword in so many ways. Um, I think obviously Boral Sword has its merits still, but in a deck like this, I think that this just does so much more. Uh, the amount of Link Fodder you have that you're able to just go through, uh, it's so, so easy to climb up into. And it just, it can just steal games. It's just a really, really strong card. 
Now, I will note before I continue on the mention of Link Monsters, uh, I'm not playing the update jammer package or anything like that. I don't really find it necessary. I tried it out a few times. I, I get the strengths of it, but uh, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it does enough for me, and it feels like it's just... Like, I can better use those extra deck spaces, you know? Um, maybe you'll disagree. Maybe you'll think there's things that I should change out. And if that is the case, feel free. I'm welcome to all of your criticisms and comments, as long as they're constructive, of course. Otherwise, you can piss off and go off my channel. But in any case, we're here for positive kind of thinking and mentality to help us improve at the game. So like I say, open to your ideas and your criticisms, as long as they're constructive, of course. Um, but anyway, I digress. Let's move on. So we're on to XE monsters. We have no synchros, no fusions to play through. We're not playing Violet Chimera. It's just not necessary. There's just plain better options really available to the deck. But anyway, so we move on to our XE monsters. So we got one copy of Baguska. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just absolutely an insane card, especially when you don't open a position where you can really do a lot. Um, the amount of times you can just set this up on the board and pass turn and you're okay. And it'll just buy you, a, you know, a couple of turns until you can get into something to, to get your plays going. And the amount of times that comes up, where otherwise I would just straight lose, it, it's just really good for that sort of thing. Uh, we've got one copy of Abyss Dweller for the same sort of reasons. Again, it's just one of those cards that sometimes you can end on that against the right deck. And it will be enough to just buy you a turn or two. Um, and of course, it's just incredibly powerful. If it's an extra card you can get onto the board, even more power to you. Um, probably the best rank four. Probably. Probably the best rank four that's legal, let's just say that. Uh, and then our final rank four, we've got Dungarees or Dungarees, as I prefer to call him. Uh, Dungarees are timeless. This is a really, really cool one because quite often I'll make it kind of like you would make Mirage Stalio in that part of the combo, just drawing cards. And because it's a fire, I can still use the effect and I can link it off pretty much immediately afterwards. And although obviously I lose the draw for the next turn with its effect, it does mean that I can churn through and see enough cards that I can stop my opponent playing. And then the following turn, I can usually move in for the kill. And then our final card for the extra deck and to round off the profile. This is something that I'm trying out and I'm kind of upset that I see that this is getting reprinted because I just bought this and it was like £10, which is like, I don't know, €12 Euros or something like that, €11 Euros maybe. Um, and it kind of upsets me a little bit because... Yeah, anyway, so I decided I would try this out. So we're trying out Lion Emperor. Um, I'm not too sold on whether this is a great idea or not. Maybe I'm just buying into my own fucking bullshit and that I think that this is better than it actually is. Um, but it seems to be okay. You know, it's a fire that you can continue to use afterwards. You can add resources back to your hand and just link it off if you don't need it. Uh, it's not an unreasonable amount of stats, but it also means that you can get rid of those kind of dead level threes that you sometimes find yourself with. Uh, and rather than waste a link resource, you can do this, add a card back, and then uh, get rid of it. And then the next turn, you've got follow-up plays. I quite like it as an option. I'm not sold as to whether it's something that I will continue to use going forward. Um, I'm wondering if anyone else has sort of tried this out there. I haven't seen any other builds with it. Not that I think, you know, I'm on the cutting edge of anything here. Um, but I haven't seen it tried and tested um, and therefore I haven't seen it criticised either and critiqued. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think of that, whether it's something you've tried out and whether it's worked for you or not. And that is it for the deck profile, guys. This is something I haven't had to sort of do in a while. <laughs> I kind of miss doing it. It's a really, really fun thing to do. Sit there and showing off a, a terrible deck that I've made and hopefully you guys approve or have some really good feedback to give me. Uh, even if it's not necessarily positive, just kind of ideas and things like that. Anyway, I'm waffling on. I'm talking absolute bollocks. You can uh, safely ignore me at this stage. Thank you either way for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely leave me a comment, thumbs up, whatever you like. Definitely hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.